Kuno saw you wield that can. Sweet graffito action, pig. Kuno likes that delinquent shit. Fuck no! Ah, shit! That's right, pig. Shit. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Heavy wooden doors, more than twice your height, stand shut in front of you. The rectangular sea-worn ornamentation appears in stark contrast to the padlock, carelessly drilled into the wood. The lock turns easily. You hear a click as the shackle pops open. Let's go. A great whoosh of air rushes into the dark innards of the church, as though rushing to fill a great vacuum. In the heart of the city, silence in this part of the church, it's almost palpable. All the shifting matter and shuffling of living things is gone. Nothing seems to exist beyond the church anymore. Maybe if you were to stand in just the right spot, even your footsteps would be completely silent. And then it's gone. Almost all of it, but for the faintest of hums. It seems the sound here is detached from its source somehow, if not blotted out outright, truly unusual. Sounds like the pale. From recordings of the far pale, you've heard them. We all have. You can hardly hear your own breathing. You produce a few muffled thumps 
after which the silence feels even more total somehow. Your voice is barely audible, not a howl, but the softest of whimpers. The lieutenant points to his ears and shakes his head. Then he leans closer. Can you hear anything? The church just has strange acoustics, some engineering trick. His detached tone conceals how uncomfortable he is. Maybe the church was designed this way to prevent boisterous activity, singing and dancing on its premises. Hmm, could be. He doesn't seem entirely convinced though. The orderly rows of ceiling panels become barely visible, then disappear completely in the darkness of the tower overhead. It's like there's something moving up there. A shadow has emerged from the tower and it's making its way toward you through all the other shadows. Yes, the darkness makes the ceiling feel infinitely far away. You see something hanging from the rafters, looking straight at you with dark eyes. Maybe it's possible to talk to it. In white, silver and apricot fields, the young mother of humanism stands above you. A crack runs across her body. She is impossibly tall, oval-faced and sad, a dark and radiant majesty. This is her innocence, Dolores Day. Cradled in her arms are a pair of glowing lungs, clearly visible from underneath her flowing dress. You should kneel. Your knees touch the floor. The floorboards are hard and cold. There you kneel among the snowdrifts, diffuse light falling on your hands from beyond the glass. The woman looks down at you kneeling. She towers among her followers, architects, laymen, courtiers. There is a sad smile on her lips and a glint in her green-blue eye of what? Compassion? Remorse? She acknowledges the passing of someone who is still alive. You. As that useless word passes through your mind, the lieutenant draws an X-shaped cross from shoulder to shoulder. Your fingertips touch your chest four times. Then you rise from your knees into the apricot-colored light of the window above you. The woman still smiles her distant smile, sundered by the crack in the glass. The old woman in the village was right. This must be the Dolorean Church of Humanity in Martinez, or the small Pinewood Church in some records. It's a minor landmark, not easy to find. Most maps misplace it. It was built not long after Revachot's founding, 300 or so years ago, by first-generation settlers. On the coast of an uninhabited archipelago, where only animals had roamed before, in the wild reeds. There used to be seven stiff churches on the coast. Les Setsa, they called them, the Seven Sisters. Only one remains. The rest were burnt in the revolution or used for building materials. We should be respectful here, although the building appears to be deserted. I do not believe we'll find anything connected to the lynching here. Something else, perhaps? Respectful? Is the lieutenant a follower of DeLoreanism? There it is again. A small pang of guilt. 
It's time to ask him what happened here. I have a theory, yes. There was a police raid a while back. I heard the place was shot to pieces. The old woman in the village was being tactful with us when she didn't mention it. She has more respect for the RCM than many around here. Well, your station was involved, I hear. Although I can be sure. How come the lieutenant isn't sure? Is this confidential information? Well, your station was involved, I hear. Although I can be sure. How come the lieutenant... Three precincts were involved in the raid, and people say Precinct 41 was one of them. I am pretty sure it was a clandestine operation. I don't know anything more about it, why it was conducted, or who participated. I try not to pry into extra-district matters. Good luck. You will not get information on a confidential operation from your station secretary just by calling. If you really don't remember, it might be better to keep this one forgotten. It happened a while ago. It's an important to our business in Martinez now. Despite the damage you've done to yourself, the title appears lodged in your hippocampus. This is Her Innocence, Dolores Day. The innocence of humanism, internationalism, and the welfare state. Perhaps the most famous human being ever to have lived. No amount of Commodore Red can wipe her sad smile from your brain thing. It has survived the deluge and haunts you still. And will haunt you forever, as it haunts all men. The highest category of historic individual, an embodiment of the world spirit. More, an innocence is elected to office by the founding party, a precedent that has taken place a mere six times in the entirety of history. The legal system of the Real Belt is built to accommodate an authentic rule should it coincide with our time. An innocence is infallible. The decisions made by one are not decisions. They are inevitabilities. What would have happened anyway? Only accelerated, packed into decades instead of centuries. An innocence is a continuous compressed event, a sacred human being. It is an honor and a glory to live when one is in office. No, we are alone. Many things, you know she was a woman of the court, the wife of an influential Marchese, and eventually the principal advisor to Irene la Navigateur, Queen of Seren, modern-day Sir Laclay, also that she was gorgeous beyond beauty. Terribly, women of the court were expected to play both contract bridge and chess sufficiently well to prove an interesting challenge to a man. A simple grasp in matters of philosophy, theology, and science was encouraged. She was, by all means, a kept woman. She made the most of her position in the Antidelorean court, a court visited by the most prominent thinkers and artists of the day. In secret, she was becoming the era's preeminent philosopher of the state, a scalpel a piercing gaze. She was an almost preternaturally magnetic and intelligent individual. To her contemporaries, she appeared out of time, a messenger from the future of the species. We all fell in love with her, head over heels. Even before she was declared an innocence, her influence was tremendous. It was on her advice that Irene Le Navigateur sponsored a number of voyages into the Pale. A costly, often tragic endeavor, ultimately vindicated by the discovery of the new, new world, the piece of reality you're standing on. She was crowned two years after the first expedition returned, setting in motion what is widely considered the greatest era in history. 
to do. Wow, indeed. When her innocence was declared, and the queen she had advised for years fell on her knees before her, she was so overcome with emotion that her lungs started glowing in her chest. Bystanders reported golden filaments lighting the already sunlit chamber around her, clearly visible beneath her dress. That is why the lungs are the symbol of love for the cultures of the Riel Belt. As did we all, the lands of the Mess and the Occident, and even far away Supramawindi, altogether 21 of the 40 Mundial nations of the time, immediately accepted Innocentic rule, even before her crowning. In a city called Advesperaskit in Vesper Messina, her homeland, the name of the city means evening comes, but it happened on a winter's morning, with the canals frozen and slush falling out of the sky. She was dressed in a white and pearl dress on an emptied out plaza with the crowd far away. Already, her thirties, the secret servicemen of the innocents, were worried about an assassination attempt. Oh yes, she looked like humanity's young mother, a perfect mother, insultingly beautiful. It was as if her face and shoulders and hands were covered in a soft down of underfeathers. You know this well, very well. Midwinter snow was beating the cobblestones around her. A small attaché of officials stood by as her thériers placed a white gold wreath on her head. The crowning was mostly witnessed by secret servicemen. One of the men in this secret service killed her 22 years later. A young man who had come to suspect that Dolores Day was not entirely human, but something else. Something that had walked in our midst, watching us stumble for hundreds, if not thousands of years, until it decided to interfere, interfere in the course of our history. We were supposed to come up with this ourselves. The man was reported to have screamed at the innocents. Dolores Day was shot in the chest with a fowling piece eight times. The man, thought to be insane, said he once touched her and her body had been unnaturally warm, like a furnace, and that sometimes, while on duty, he observed her forgetting to breathe for over ten minutes. This inhuman quality was witnessed by many others as well, glowing lungs and all. It is commonly attributed to mass hysteria and religious psychology. Terrifying is a term too emotionally charged for your semantic memory, or what remains of it. But, although she is often considered to be the greatest human being to ever live, there was something ominous about Dolores Day, constantly surrounded by her thériers. She was the most socially secluded and least self-aware of all the innocences. Some modern thinkers would consider her a war criminal for the campaigns she waged against the Mesk state. And then there were the resettlement programs. The Mesk state tried to detach itself from innocentic rule. Parts of the world were experiencing whiplash from accelerating into secularism. Her mandatory education programs and mass resettlement of upstream Marguerite were problematic as well. Dissenters were suppressed by a military force she called the Army of Humanity, suggesting those who fight against it are not part of humanity. She adored chess, yes, but also military war games. Dolores Day often holds a tiny tin soldier between her index finger and thumb in icons such as this. She was also blonde the blondest woman you have ever seen, with green eyes the color of the Pacific, Mare Interregnum. Little is known of her Marchese husband. It's as if he vanished from history after completing his role, which was to introduce Dolores Day to court. In conclusion, 
Yes, there is something lonely, paranoid, and even terrifying that people seldom mention but feel when they think of her. This subtle terror is part of her iconography. Lieutenant Yefrater, you've stood there for over five minutes. What are you thinking of, if I may ask? Okay. This church, the coast in general, we shouldn't linger here. This isn't a good place to get lost in. We should conclude our business and move on. The shards glimmer in the dark. You see little pearls of light on the edges of the crack that splits the female figure. Something was written there. Remains of broken letters line the emulsion. What it said, you do not know. Yes, we all are. Her name, body and rule are synonymous with humanism. The laws we enforce are DeLorean in origin. It's not spiritual, it's constitutional. The DeLorean system does not demand faith, only accordance. stands above you, a precious and complex wax painting on a single pane of glass. A crack runs across the length of her body, her face oval and sad. A jigsaw of broken shards falls into place in front of you, a ghostly reconstruction of the stained glass window. Before it was shattered, there was an older woman beneath the younger one, and a text, a light motif below them both. Unknown. Something during the raid the lieutenant mentioned? Or just hooligans looking for something to break? The escutcheon on her throne says, Irene the Navigator. She is depicted as an older woman wearing thick-rimmed eyeglasses, holding a golden rights apfel in one hand and a scepter in the other. This is the queen her innocence day advised. Above, she herself is whole. Small figures of wise men, common men, worshippers walk up the stairs to stand at her feet. Secret servicemen, years, stand in a row guarding her. It must have taken years to produce this work in all its dizzying detail. Below both women, in luminous black letters, Après la vie, mort. Après la mort, la vie de nouveau. And then, along the left side, Après le monde, la gré. Après le gré, le monde de nouveau. After life, death. After death, life again. After the world, the pearl. After the pearl the world again. This is the great leitmotif of humanism, a summary of the effect of the discovery of this Isola, the Insulindian, on human thinking. A tremendous sea change akin to finding life after death. Death, life again. After the world, the pale. After the pale, the world again. This exaltation is common in Dolorian sacralism. In the early years, it was even incorporated as the RCM slogan. No more, however. It was deemed subservient to use a strongly moral intern related motto. We already suspected of bootlicking. The sentence was also seen as too feminine. It was a macho thing. Justice, union, 
prudence and force. So do I. The mother of humanism towers above you. A wax painting on a cracked pane of glass. Nothing has changed in her expression. Yes, we all are. Her name, body and rule are synonymous with humanism. The laws we enforce are DeLorean in origin. The woman looks by in silence, smiling enigmatically. It's not spiritual, it's constitution. A machine stands in the corner, watched over by the figures on the stained glass window. It's turned on and quivering with soft electricity. Another radio computer. And this time it's already turned on. We should leave. I doubt this place bears any connection to the case. It's also quite similar to the one we have down at the station. Must be the same model. The one you saw earlier was the Ream Civic. This is the Ream Prefect. A model number RC7024. Equipped with a Feld mainframe and a Ream compatible interim printer. The Ream Prefect is the governmental version of the commonly used Ream Civic model. Although mostly based on the same technology, the Ream Prefect is equipped with better noise attenuation circuits. You see fluorescent play and print buttons on the keyboard. A hatch connected to the central compartment is wide open. The lieutenant says nothing. You see the machine's glowing frame reflected back from his diamond-shaped glasses. You're free to proceed. Behind the hatch sits a cube-like crisscross of filaments, smoldering in the dark like fireflies. Silver tape on the side says, in black marker, Log, February to March. Another filament memory. Press play to talk with the repeater. The speaker comes to life. Static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. An old lady greets you. Her voice sounds a hundred years old. Good afternoon. Fortress accident on Saint Brune. This is the East Insulindian repeater station one. Please repeat. Is this the personal log? It's the same old woman you spoke with through the radio computer in the doomed commercial area. Good, thank you. Please repeat. Is this the personal log? Good. Please repeat the password. Let's look around. There's no use trying to guess the answer. Received. I will register this login attempt. Fortress accident, is there anything else I can do for you today? I have two machines registered to this company name in Martinez. One on Saint-Brune, the other on Rue de saint guilaine Saint-Brune, that's the church. And Rue de saint guilaine that's the Doom commercial area. Anything else I can help you with? Goodbye, Fortress Accident. The machine's keyboard is still illuminated, revealing fluorescent play and print buttons. Nothing happens.
Shadow is a man, a man made of the same stuff as the carpentry of the building. He is studying you intently. The crab man. The man leaned forward a little, fixing you with a steady, unreadable gaze, then speaks. Habitual alcohol use has made you into a scared little pussy, Holmes. But don't worry. Everything's gonna be all right. You come to the right place. That accent is Villa Lobos, a peninsula in Mesk and a district in general. There's a sizable contingent of Villa Lobos speaking Mesks in Rivershaw. Here you can receive the mother's love. And when you're ready, she will take your hand and lift you out of the despair at the bottom of that bottle. This man is obviously a habitual narcotics user. Do we really need to question him? Hey, and what was that about the bottle again? You haven't even drank that much lately. Lay off it already. Sheesh. Oh yeah, sure. You don't know anything about alcohol use. You got it all under control, way. I could smell the control all the way over here. I know it's hard to admit that you got a problem. I was like you once. I couldn't take an honest look into my own heart and see I was in pain. You know, actually, since we're here, you may want to pay attention to what the ceiling climber is saying. Don't trust me. Trust the mother. I'm only the messenger, Holmes. This is the Church of the Mother of Silence. You are welcome here. You have no idea what the fuck he's talking about. Is he just trying to throw you off your game? Whatever it is, he's quite confident about it. Just look how gracefully he sways. Tis not an act, my liege. Saving perchance, he hath deceived his very self. This man is a zealot. Never known myself to be a crab, but if that's the name you got for me, I won't stop you from using it. I always thought of myself more like a flame flickering along the rafters and beams. It may be that I gotta work on my technique. That's not the only technique he's working on. Look at those carved sculptures. And is that a satchel of tools over there? Sure am. Whittling wood used to be something I just did to busy my hands. Now I use those same hands in service of something greater than my own restlessness. All right, let's consider the context and meaning here. It's all just for the mother, man. No need to overthink it. I was in a gang way but my memories of that time are fading. Most of them are already gone.
Na ese, it's not like that. Best thing that could happen to you, losing your memory. Do you remember your name, sir? Tiago's my name, but those syllables don't mean much to me these days. A name isn't just your identity, but also, so to speak, your place amongst your fellows, your place in the world. I ain't got no use for such a place anymore. That's just the thing, Holmes. None of that matters. This is a special place. There's a perforation in the world up there. A way out into nothingness. This church was built around it for purposes of veneration. I circled it, nurtured by the silence bestowed by the mother. One of these days, I'd be pure enough to go drink from it directly. No, no, no. There's a new god in town. And she can be painted or sculpted because she has no limb or even a face. She is the end. She is a cavity in the dark beyond sense. She saved me, but I couldn't describe her to you. No one can, Holmes, and no one ever will. I will be incinerated, but not destroyed. Finally, I won with the state of the world before reality began. That sounds a bit like substitution behavior, no? You know a thing or two about that. It's not like that at all, man. It's just faith and joyful service. Too gleeful, those words. He is lying. Not to you. To his very own self. I heard that before, Wei. And I know I can't convince you on the spot. But think, when's the last time you woke up from silent communion with a hangover, regretting what you did last night? There are drugs darker than alcohol circling your system. She took you for a good spin, huh? Don't worry, bro. That love is but a drop compared to the ocean of the mother's love. The mother will eat all of you and never spit you out. I know it will take time. Don't sweat it. I know it will take time. Don't sweat it. I think they were, a long time ago. I had to shed them like skins, to get closer to the center of the silence. You could have them, I don't need them anymore. They look pretty dapper actually. Hard to say, I think I did some construction work here, back when I still had material worries. Up there? I realized what the true purpose of the church was. Been spending a lot of time here ever since. The past is nothing to me now, way. Eh? It didn't belong to me. Hmm. Does it mean he witnessed the police raid? I'm a seraph, Holmes. I sing the mother's glory. I am from no Marietti, if that's what you're thinking. And the song I sing is Silent as the Mother. Marietti is a mesk style of music and dance, commonly seen at all manner of festivities, especially weddings. It's delightfully quaint owing to its peasant origins. He lost his cool there for a moment. Seems you hit some nerve. 
The sinewy figure lingers on the wooden beams, blending into the shadows. <sighs> Something like that. Did you witness it? Not really. Or at least I don't remember much of it anymore. The mother's love has done its job. That's what's so great about the mother. It lets you forget about everything. Other spooker? Oh, esa viejita es muy estudiosa. <laughs> Don't know, Holmes. The Aita is grandma? No. I just call her viejita because of her clothes. She's actually quite young. Or maybe not that young. H, that's what I said, Holmes. Don't really follow her comings and goings. Just see her typing on her computer now and then. We got different interests. I'm afraid not, S.A. You just have to wait until she comes back, or... Or search through her radio computer. Too many times, S.A., you need it for something. Surveys are a good way to fish for personal information, especially in the name of public safety. Don't swear, Evato. The password is afterlife death. What do you think of that? Makes me almost pity La Nilita Pequeña when I hear it. The ones in the tent outside? Right? I see them. Guessing they're the ones who call me a crab. Probably scared of me. Nah, man. They look pretty funny. And I don't harm no one anymore. Anyway. Why not? They wouldn't bother me none. I'm usually way up there, imbibing. Ain't no music on earth that can reach where I go. Might even be nice to have some company. He said that in spite of himself, he's more attached to the human than he'd like to think. I think we're done here, Essa. That was an interesting conversation. However, I'm still not sure how it's relevant to our investigation. Since Dolores Day liked little figurines, right? Liked holding little men between her fingers, remember? You have the headless foul rider figurine. You should give it to her. Win her back. Don't be so pessimistic. Love doesn't die that easily. So very, very, very nifty. Nifty and mysterious. This is surely what the figurines are for. The mother of humanism stands above you, a precious and complex wax painting on a single pane of glass. A crack runs across the length of her body. Her face oval and sad. Why? That does seem to be a problem. Maybe you meant something else? I don't know. What are we thinking of? Part of your mind has gone on to other things already. The mother of humanism towers above you. A wax painting on a cracked pane of glass. 
Nothing has changed in her expression. The machine's keyboard is still illuminated, revealing fluorescent play and print buttons. The speaker comes to life. Good afternoon. Votre accident on set good. Please repeat the password. Good. I have unlocked the filament. After ending the call, please press print to access the filament. Votre accident, is there anything else I can do for you today? Goodbye, for twice accident. The machine's keyboard is still illuminated, revealing fluorescent play and print buttons. The printer prints out a long text document with dated paragraphs. It looks a bit like someone's journal. The first entry made on the 4th of February, 51, by an unknown author, is short and concise. Arrived at the church, the door was boarded up. So I used the crowbar to get inside. Looks like the place has been deserted. Nothing out of the ordinary, but I'll ask around. Need to figure out how to get the electricity in. The lieutenant leans closer, scouring the printout over your shoulder. Just as you finish reading, he looks up, muttering under his breath. 4th of February. That's over a month ago. Whoever set up those machines has been here for quite a while. Our case? No, I don't think so. It must be some local eccentric. 6th of February, 51. Had a little chat with the local fishermen. Said I shouldn't go near that place. That the church was spooky and ridden with narcotics. It's a little spooky, all right. Still haven't figured out the electricity. See? Ridden with narcotics, just like Andre said. 7th of February, 51. Finally got the electricity in. Next on the agenda, a new antenna. I'm thinking Esca series? Something advanced. Why would anyone need any of this equipment here? 8th of February, 51. Bought the antenna. Had some problems setting it up. Called Simo for help. Heard the others are back to making art. Drinking somewhere out of town. Sulislav started a rock band again. Lexi has been seen asking money from strangers. But at least the artists have their act together. They're qualified labor. They can get work anywhere. Graphic design, ads. The programmers are doing fine too. I mean, they're programmers. The writers, though, they're fucked. I just have to find out what caused that data loss and be done with it. Still don't understand how it managed to wipe out the backup, when the backup wasn't even connected to the front. I know, I know. Everyone thinks it's impossible. They say I must be lying. I'm here to set it right. Seems like something to do with radio computers. Unfortunately, I don't know enough about them to understand what the author is saying. Something about the backup data getting destroyed, and how everyone thought it was the author's fault. Let's just keep reading. I think these people worked in the radio computer games business, the one we saw in the Doom commercial area. They must be our former co-workers. 12th of February, 51. Brought some food from the grocery store. Apparently, there's a strike going on in the harbor. Definitely not happy to see the Martinez people again. Everything's now set up in the church. Going to start working tomorrow, 8 a.m. The strike. We are nearing the date of the murder. Keep reading. I'm interested now. I want to know what's that radio anomaly that sent this person here in the first place. 25th of February, 51. I've been sending data up to Lintel for a while now, trying to recreate the data loss, but nothing. Didn't even feel like logging in the disappointment, but I did discover a curious audio-spatial anomaly at the back of the church. I've named it the Swallow. It swallows sound. Need to get some mics. 
is she talking about? 28th of February, 51. Yes, the first recordings confirm that the swallow is real and I'm not just losing my mind. It's a pillar of silence with a diameter of approximately three meters. Seems like the higher I go, the less I record. This might be a coincidence, or it could be connected to the data loss that led me here. The pillar of silence. She is talking about the silence. Is she suggesting it's more than just an architectural quirk? The lieutenant doesn't answer. He follows your gaze, studying the basins. The water shines in them. No ripples. March 51. Some kind of young disco men have appeared next to the church. I've been trying to record the silence to find the epicenter, but now it turns out I've also been capturing the future of dance music, one neo-disco song, over and over again. Fortunately, the song is so monotonous, I was able to devise an algorithm to factor it out. The other day, one of the disco men came in. Before I could even say, hello, she got scared and left. Good, I don't want anyone distracting me from my work. That disco man must be a cell. The girl on the ice? Sounds like her, yes. March 51. I got a call from the repeater station. Someone has tried to access the radio computer in our old office in Martinez. Can't do anything about it. The storekeeper still doesn't want to let me inside the building. Thinks I'm part of some kind of curse. How Martinez of her. I knew it wasn't a good idea to meddle with the machine. No, no. It was a great idea. You're learning things. This is how you learn things about machines. March 51. A new two-meter aux cable. Noodles. Crackers. Ping-ping energy drinks. Water. Toothpaste. Gum. Also, some canned air. Your reading is interrupted by the sound of the church door opening. A strange woman makes straight for the radio computer. Breaking into my radio computer, I see. Yes, you are breaking in, but not into her radio computer. You're a master circuit bender. I do apologize for the intrusion, madame. We are with the RCM, you see. You won't find any answers from here. It's just me and my computer, and it has been this way for weeks. Now please give me some room. I need two seconds to see that you haven't destroyed anything. We should talk to her, after she has rebooted the machine. What is it? No, you just printed out my personal log and wasted some paper. Yes. Or... No. Not anymore. That project is dead. She doesn't seem surprised to be recognized. Rather sad. Something passes over her face before she straightens her back. I am Sona Lufkanen Kilde the former lead programmer of Fortress Accident and RSA radios. I have over 16 years of programming experience, and I'm proficient in both Vox and Orbis languages. If you're not here to hire me, I don't really know how I can help you. Did she say over 16 years of experience? She must have started programming when she was still a teenager. That still doesn't answer what she's doing in an abandoned church. Nope. 
Yes. And I don't care. I don't care about craft men. No. Yes. No. You're right. I'm not. I brought them here. These are my machines. Please don't touch anything. I use the AR-1 as my RAIN prefix processing unit. Mm-hmm. Yes? You really don't know anything about radio computers, do you? All right. Well, all radio computers perform operations up on air. So in order to gain more processing power, you need to invest in a good antenna. On the front, the unified front of radio waves, licensed and controlled by Lintel in the East in Selindic region. It's all around us. That's what on air means. Like love. I guess it is. So far I've been quite satisfied with it. Martinez is an unstable region with bad coverage and the operation has been surprisingly stable. But it's not the cheapest one on the market. So I wouldn't recommend it for your regular red tape operations. Fraser 1000 is a foolproof line for civilians. Anyway, you should do some research before you decide to buy anything. Ask around, compare the prices. There are many milieus dedicated to that sort of thing. She liked to tell me this. It calmed her nerves. I'm working. The machine seems almost alien with its pulsing core. The light casts in her face in a strange shadow. Could you... Could you just... Shh... For a moment? Or get to the point. I really need to focus on something. So you do know something about computers. You're right. Prefect is used mostly by the government peeps. No, I don't. Because I needed something good for my investigation and Reim Civic is widely agreed to be below all standards. So I had to upgrade. Besides, owning a Reim Prefect isn't such a big deal anymore. No, actually, it is kind of a big deal. You don't see Reem Prefects in every police department, for example. I know a friend of a friend who used freelance for the Coalition. I was actually aiming for the military grade Reim Rational series, but couldn't find one. Prefect is mainly based on the same technology as Reim Civic, so it's kind of a ripoff. But it does have better compatibility with newer antenna models. So I won't complain. They are connected to my Rain Prefect. Whatever you do, just please don't move them, okay? Thanks. Short and terse. There you have it. Whatever she's using them for, they're hers. Great. What? I hate it. I bet she hasn't even heard it. Yeah. Like, all the time. My tent neighbors don't really ease up with their partying, do they? Maybe I'd have to be on drugs to get it, but to a sober mind it just sounds like uninspired rock whipping. No idea what it has to do with either dancing or music. This is about those speed freaks in the tent, isn't it? I've got some news for you. It's not a nightclub they want to build here. Take a guess, why don't you? I can't believe they got you so easily. Go have another talk with those up-and-coming entrepreneurs, will you? Thanks.
Good luck. I'm not coming in there. You really like those questions, don't you? I'm conducting scientific research here. You can't throw me out. I'm looking for the location of a two millimeter hole in the world. Wait, what? She's looking for a disruption in the radio waves. That's what her personal log said. The lieutenant raises his brows, but doesn't say anything. Yes, that's what led me here. But I suspect it might be something a bit more complicated than that. Exactly. What does it mean? Up to now, it has been impossible to say what it is because it's impossible to measure nothing. What do you think it is? What qualities does nothing have? How do you measure something that does not exist? Easy. You measure it by the world around it. Exactly. Very true. That's what I've been aiming for. That's why I have those basins. I've tried using hydro-transducers to record the silence. To find out where it begins. Ha! Huh. Hydro-transducers. So that's what those water basins are. Devices for recording sound through water. But honestly, it's not progressing very well. Somewhere underneath those roof beams, I assume. Only a faint crisscross of rafters can be made out from the dark. Most of the tower disappearing into the shade. There's this place at the back of the church, a place where all audible vibrations seem to decease. I've named it the Swallow, and the higher you go, the less you record. The Pillar of Silence? Are you sure it's not just an architectural quirk? Maybe, but it's oddly close to the physical coordinates of the data loss that led me to this place. I know. No, I don't. Because it's just trial and error, trying to locate the swallow, the exact point in space. And I don't have a... You know what? It would be really helpful if you could just stop talking and let me work. Great. Thanks. Talk to my associates, right? Are you gonna help us? With the church, I mean. Shoot. Hello again. again. So, uh, how are things going? And? What happened? Oh, man! Who is he? What did you think? Really? Huh. Interesting. What's he doing in the church? No matter. Is he going to be a problem? Yeah, Noid is right. Let's get back to the point. What are we going to do about him? These guys will never catch him. You will never catch him. 
there's nothing to do. I don't know, man. Doesn't it feel like a major hindrance to you? A spooky guy climbing around when all the guests are trying to have nice, friendly hyper time? I guess it's not a massive problem, now that I think of it. Everyone is welcome to dance till the morning light! Yeah! Maybe. Uh, I guess we'll figure something out. Okay, but what about the other spooker? The one in Grandma's clothes? Did you see her? A programmer? That's odd. What was she like? Did you ask her about the nightclub? Come on, man. Who will you trust? A spooky programmer or us? We just want to make the world a better place. Feels the love! Get down and feel it! A half-hearted sell of something which does not seem worth buying. You'll get there, believe me. When we've got our gear set up, things will be flowing and pumping. Anyway, now that it's settled, how did she see? I mean, disposition-wise, about the dance club idea. Yah, Oda 9. Rocking it or dropping it? What a pity. That's my favourite thing in the world. And she doesn't like it at all. A shame. What can we do now? Do you see a way out of this jam? And into a laser-lit future of dance and unity? Unity! Dance! And you can't just evict her? Look at you, honor man. No, Lloyd. He's right. Maybe we've approached it the wrong way after all. I'm sure there's a workaround. We can make a deal not to bother her. If that's okay with her, we only want to get in the church and spread the joy and ecstasy of music. The lines in the dark exist, coexist. At least Crabman seems like an advanced being. He's odd. He'll understand. Yeah, he can do his climbing thing in the tower. And the programmer, does she like anodic dance music? Egghead cannot believe what you just said. It makes him pump the jam a little slower for a moment, but then he returns to the full swing of it. No worries. We'll figure it out. If coexisting fails, you can always muscle her out, right? If it's all okay with you, what do you think? Excellent. Good luck, my friend. Goodbye, officer. The large headed incremental progress. Yeah, huh? I see you here again. Hello again. My associates, I haven't got much to say about them. Sorry. To the cops. Don't know what makes you think it'll be any different later, but... It's supposed to become, except that... The floorboards are twisting. There will never be a club for... Not in a million years. Go ahead. Hi again. So, uh, how are things going? Goodbye, officer.
away again. So, uh, how are things going? A number of things don't add up. Let's take a look. How about gather around, kids? The young speed freak puts down a busted capacitor and looks at you. The one with the large head seems very enthusiastic about whatever you have planned. Their would-be leader is less amused. But you still are! What happened? That's a real downer. The young speed freak is silent. Fuck, man. It's difficult to get along with some people, but we're trying to make an effort. We are on a mission here. I have no idea how you arrived at that conclusion, but it's wrong. Look, we even have speakers. One speaker. They have one speaker. What do you mean, friend? It's a one-speaker system. It's monodynamic. You wouldn't know the first thing about sound reproduction in anodic music. Other speaker. <sighs> this may be the brain damage talking, but you've definitely never heard of monodynamic or one-speaker systems. What do you know about spinning tape? Nothing. I'm sorry, but there is no lab equipment, and no drug ingredients. He said it was for his nose. What more do you want? Likely pseudoephedrine. Almost exactly the shape of ephedrine. Ephedrine makes you happy, and so does pseudoephedrine. And of all cellular-based life, what's your point, Lawbringer? No shit. That's... Come on, that's... I meant to say, not true. What do you mean, do? There's resignation in his voice. He's almost ready to drop the act. It wouldn't take a lot of pushing. What do you mean by lenient? Okay, man. Okay. Things are just so, so hard for an entrepreneur in this city right now. It's not like we lied when we said we want to turn a church into the wickedest club in East Revershall. Because we do! We totally do! We just... Need to turn it into a speed lab before. To get our foot in the door. Like I told you, spooky arseholes moved in while I was getting all this stuff together. A month ago, the place was empty, and now it's all spooked up. No, man. They're spooky, all right. It's just that they would also probably call the police if we started cooking speed in there. But the sign was way off, too. I couldn't feel the love at all. Sir, you promised you'd be lenient. This is it. Judgment time. Yeah! 
I knew it. It's impossible now. No, Andre, it's harder now. This hard cop has come to show us how much the fish is, and the fish is always so much more. We all know there was never going to be a club for anodic music with the speed lab. Now it has a fighting chance. There needs to be a club for anodic music in there. Needs to. Everyone hates each other. Everybody hates it here. It's all just drugs and we're slaves and I can't. We are running out of time. We need a win, Andre. I promise this will be a win. We won't cook speed in there. We'll do it clean. We'll do it true. We'll do it sober and real and beautiful. This will be a victory for the light. This will be nothing. You can hear the ice crack underneath you. Outside the last century waterfront development is crumbling in the wind. A grape shot row of falling houses. And so is Rue de saint Giraud and all the houses on Main Road. The old cinema is sinking underneath Villa La Boss. What? Okay, we'll try to do it without the drugs. We'll do a straight club up in there, spinning the maddest reels and nothing but, I swear to God. Okay, Egg? From here on, it'll be straight all the way. Goodbye, officer. The large-headed youth has closed his eyes, lost in the music. Sensing you, he opens them. Incremental progress! Yeah! Hello again. I did, and I'm sorry, for what it's worth, which isn't much. This is why I didn't go into the tent. Typical delinquency. You don't get to choose your posse, they choose you. Mine are idiots, but they're mine. I tried to talk Andre out of it. Okay, but I still regret it. I should have been able to control them, and I will in the future. I promise. May I ask? What did you tell them? Thank you. I'll get them under wraps, I promise. Yes, what is it? The swallow, you mean? What about it? Great, thanks. I don't want to make anything work. Yes, anything. I don't want to make anything work. Easy. When her research is done, she can move out. What? No, I don't really need any help with the project. She thinks about it. A glassy look in her eyes. A gust of wind brings more snow in from the broken gallery. It touches her hair. All right. Bring me the game's off-site copy from my old workspace, if you really want to help. It's stored on a filament memory, and I'm unable to go and fetch it myself. 
No, that's the production schedule you stole and accessed without authorization. I don't need it. In his defense, it was simply laying in the desk drawer of an abandoned cubicle. Okay, but still... It's a backup of my former employer's project. The radio game we were working on. It's stored on a filament memory, just like the one inside this radio computer. She's making it extra simple for you. The backup itself is destroyed now, but I'm hoping to use what's left of it to pinpoint the exact location of the anomaly. You just have to go to my old workspace and get the filament. Hold on. If it's called an off-site copy, then why is it still on-site? Oh god, not this again. <sighs> it is not on-site. It is in the basement. Perfectly safe and not connected to the front at all. Basement? Sounds like it's technically still on-site. And no, taking it outside the building wouldn't have protected it from the data loss. There's nothing wrong with keeping the backup in the basement. What happened was a freak accident that has nothing to do with how the backup was stored. We clear? Yeah, that's the one. You can get in through the bookshop. You just have to do some explaining to the bookstore lady. That's her name, I believe. Good. Then you might know the giant ice bear fridge in the building's cellar. The filament is inside the fridge. Just go and get it. In the giant ice bear fridge! I just told you. It has red glowing eyes. It's impossible to miss. You just need to get the offside copy from the ice bear. But, you've been to the fridge and it wasn't there. There was a note saying... Wait. A note from whom? Did it specify where they took the filament memory? Jerisa. Of course! Our project lead, Suliswov Jerisa. God, he was always so hell-bent on keeping the copy somewhere safe. And feature creep, and the valley of the heads. Like it would have made a difference. The offside copy was perfectly safe when the data loss happened. That data loss was anomalous. And the heads... I won't even get into the heads. Millions of them. Go find that copy from that ice cream maker, will you? Thanks. Valley of a thousand heads. You like the sound of that. This is getting ridiculous. Can't you just be frosted? Or, I don't know... I don't know about the ice cream maker. Just figure something out. Wait, what? Who's dead, buddy? You know, we don't actually have to tell the entire world about the fridge. Whose body is it? Y you put it there? You put a dead body inside the ice bear fridge. Okay, very cool. Thanks for keeping me in the loop. We would appreciate it if you kept this knowledge to yourself, miss. Who would I tell? My mother? I don't have anyone to tell. And if I did, I wouldn't. I don't care. Thanks. And here's my balsam mold tool. You might need it to hack loose some ice. It opens everything. If you get me the offside copy, then you can keep the falsehood.
This orange machine is dead still. It has a hand crank ice cream churner and an electric freezer. The ice around it slowly melting. This orange machine is dead still. It has a hand crank ice cream churner and an electric freezer. The ice around it slowly melting. Ice squeaks beneath your Kvalzun multi-tool, but your fingers slip away from the tool. The lid shut as tightly as before. And it's already unplugged. There's not much else to do other than wait for it to defrost or bulk up and get stronger. This orange machine is dead still. It has a hand crank ice cream churner and an electric freezer. The ice around it 